Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is good that we are gathered together for worship this morning. As this is the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. I welcome all of you who have gathered both here in the sanctuary as well as those who might be joining us online as together we create this unique and wonderful community of faith to lift our hearts and minds and voices in praise to God. What a gift it is that we have an opportunity to do so together today day. <clears throat> Excuse me, this, as this is the first Sunday of the season of Advent, we are excited about the opportunities we have to worship together this morning. And one of those is an opportunity to say welcome to each other, and we'll do that as a part of the uh, passing of the peace a little later on in the service today. But to help us in that, I do hope that everyone here in the sanctuary will take time to sign the friendship pads. They're usually found on one end of the pew or the other. This is a, a chance for us to have a record of all who've come and gathered together for worship this morning, as well as a chance for you to greet one another by name as those pads are passed down and then passed back. I do hope that uh, guests and visitors that you might experience a special welcome, for we are truly grateful for the opportunity to share our worship together with you. So as that friendship pad is passed down and back, please do include your name, maybe an address, email, phone number, or some other way that we might be in touch with you in this week that is ahead. For if you are looking for a church home, I hope that you will find Unity Presbyterian Church to be a place of worship and service that God might be calling you to be a part of. If that's the case, you can speak with me or Pastor Molly or someone else seated near you that we might have opportunity to extend that word of hospitality and answer any questions that you might have together today. As I said today, we will be passing the peace. We've started that uh, tradition on the first Sunday as we also celebrate communion on the first Sunday of the month. And so uh, just listen for the instructions about when it is time to, to share that word of welcome and peace with each other as well as then the music that will draw us back together. This morning we are celebrating communion, uh, passing the plates in the pews, and so you'll have opportunity to share communion with each other. We do ask that you would hold the bread or hold your cup of juice until all have been served, and we will then partake of the elements together. Today's also the first Sunday of the month, which means peanut butter and jelly Sunday, a day we bring our donations for the Fort Mill Care Center, and so thank you for your generosity in being a part of that important ministry as well. But this is the season of Advent. We begin today, and if you've not picked up an Advent devotion yet, they are available on tables there in the narthex, so please be sure to pick one of those up before, uh, before you leave today. Following the service, come and join us in the Fellowship Hall. We have a, an all-church Advent workshop. We'll be making Advent wreaths and all kinds of other exciting things this morning. So come and join us immediately following this service in the Fellowship Hall. Um, looking ahead as well, you'll see the uh, Tony Daler Christmas auction is tomorrow evening, always a highlight of the season that begins at 5.30 p.m. Next Sunday afternoon, I hope that you will all come and be a part of our All Church uh, Caroling and Chili and some more event uh, that will take place on the front lawn starting at four o'clock. So come and be a part of that time. Looking ahead as well, the Festival of Carols with our local high school choirs, in addition to our chancel choir, is on Tuesday, December the 10th. Um, on Sunday, December the 15th, we've got the chancel choir, youth choir, and guest inter inter instrumentalists with our lessons and carol service. So come and be a part of that time as well. You'll also see the dates and times for uh, Christmas Eve services and many other Advent and Christmas things coming up in the, this season ahead. My friends, this is a joyful, wonderful time that we might worship God together, and we'll begin uh, this season with a uh, gathering song. You'll just remain seated as we all sing together. You'll also notice there is a congregational response we'll sing at the end of the service as a congregation as well. But let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning. <clears throat>
Please join me in a responsive call to worship. Jesus says, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. We are preparing ourselves for the days when the nations shall, shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, and neither shall they. Advent is a time of expectation, and we anticipate the coming of Jesus Christ, the true light of the world. As we light candles for the four weeks leading to Christmas, we reflect on the coming of Christ. The church has always used the language, the coming of Christ, because it speaks to a deep truth. Christ is coming. Christ is always coming, always entering a troubled world, a wounded heart. And so today, we come from a world of darkness into Christ's world of light. We come from a world of weariness into God's strength and hope. We come from a slumbering world with the Spirit to awaken our souls and watch the coming of Christ. The first candle is traditionally known as the hope candle. As we light our first Advent candle, we pray with a holy hope in God and the light that still shines. Let us pray. Faithful God, your promises stand unshaken through all generations. Renew us in hope that we, that we may be awake and alert as we watch for the glorious return of Jesus Christ, our judge and savior who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we begin our worship today, let us say together, may we be surprised by hope as we walk in the light of the Lord.
may be seated. Friends, preparing for Christ's coming requires honest examination of our lives and our hearts. We are invited to share the truth of our lives, knowing that when we do, we are opening ourselves up to God's love and grace and forgiveness. So let us now join in our confession together, first out loud and then silently. Let us pray. Most holy God, we confess that we are not the people you hope us to be, the very ones you favor. We too often ignore or ridicule. You ask us to watch and wait with expectation, but we are not very patient people, and we are not really sure what we are expecting. Forgive our lack of faith. May this Advent season be a holy time. Surprise us again with hope and your presence. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Rejoice, rejoice. rejoice. Emmanuel has come to us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As we are reconciled to God in Jesus Christ, let us share the welcome and peace of Christ with one another. First scripture reading today is from 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verses 12 through 20. Let us listen for the word of the God. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered, no, my Lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grants the petition you have made for him. And she said, Let your servant find favor in your sight. Then the woman went away and ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house in Roma. Elkanine knew his wife Hannah, 
and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah received and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. At this time, let me invite our young friends and children to come and to spend a few moments together with me here on the steps. If you are watching from home, hope that you'll draw near the screen, that you might be a part of this special time together as well. Good morning, good morning. How are you today? Good, good. It is good to see you. Good to be back with you this morning. And you are always, when you are here, makes worship so much better. So thank you so much for being a part of our worship today. Now today, you can see the sanctuary has been decorated with a few kind of things we didn't see last week, right? We've got like Christmas trees and wreaths and special candles and, and all kinds of things. Because this is what he... You do, that's right, yes, yeah, so we can have to prepare our home, that's right, yeah, we can get our own houses ready for Christmas, yeah. Did you, okay, yeah, some of you already have your trees, yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, well, guess what, I know, it seems like Christmas is already here, right, but guess what, we still have to wait a little bit, right? I know, I know, it's only December 1st. And so we in the church have this special season that we call Advent, and we use it as a time to wait and prepare and get ready for Christmas. And guess what? The Gospel of Luke does the same thing. Jesus isn't born until the second chapter in the Gospel of Luke. So there's this whole first chapter with stories about other people to help us prepare and get ready for Jesus. And the first people that we meet are Elizabeth and Zechariah. And they were pretty old, but they were also very faithful. And they didn't have any children, but they really prayed and wanted to have children. And in the story that we'll hear for today, finally, God sends an angel to speak to Zechariah and says, guess what? You're going to have a baby. But Zechariah didn't believe him. He thought, wow, this has been too long. We've prayed too long for this. This is going to be a surprise. And so one of the things that we remember as we get ready for Christmas is that sometimes it's hard to wait, right? Uh huh, that's right, yeah. And that helps us wait too, doesn't it? That's right. So. You do, yeah, that's right. The elves help us, help us to wait too, that's right. So Elizabeth and Zechariah are really helpful for us in, in helping us learn how to wait and how long it is to wait. He just looks at us, that's right, yeah, that's right. So, all right, well, let us pray together, all right? So, and we will pray that God will help us wait as we get ready for Christmas. So let us pray. Y'all, I'll, I'll pray a little bit. You can repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God. we thank you Amen. before Jesus, Jesus. And, the and the season of Advent that helps us wait. Helps us wait. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you all so much. It's good to see you this morning. If you are first grade and under and headed to children and worship or to the uh, nursery, uh, or if you're headed back to your seats, we're going to surround you all with our song of blessing. Our second scripture reading for this morning does come from the gospel according to Luke from the first chapter. Today we'll read verses 5 through 25. Our Advent theme this year is surprised by hope. 
And as we prepare to meet Jesus once again together, we will be reading through the first chapter of Luke's gospel. Luke begins his gospel with a short word of introduction, indicating that while many have attempted to share a narrative about all the things that have been fulfilled among us from eyewitnesses who have handed down these stories, Luke wants to share with us a well-ordered account. And he begins in a somewhat surprising place. So let us hear this word of God for us today. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. And his wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Once, when he was serving as a priest before God, and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now, at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. And then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, how will I know this is so? For I'm an old man and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I've been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah, wondering at his delay in the sanctuary. And when he did come out, he could not speak to them. And they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When the time of his service was ended, he went to his home. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived. And for five months, she remained in seclusion. She said, this is what the Lord has done for me. When he looked favorably on me and took away the disgrace I have endured among my people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Do you like surprises? In preparation for this Advent series, Surprised by Hope, I found multiple studies which indicated that roughly half of the population enjoys being surprised, and the other half avoids surprises at all costs. And if you ask a follow-up question, would you like a surprise party, the percentage who say no climbs to 66%. Now my wife Sarah knows me well, and she did not plan a surprise party for my birthday last week. For I am one who generally does not enjoy surprises. However, I must express my immense gratitude for the card that I received with had so many of your signatures on it. It does make me wonder what else is happening here at the church that I have absolutely no idea about. 
but what a touching and heartwarming surprise that was. Thank you very much. By design, surprises catch us off guard. We are not prepared. We're not in control. And for many people, that can be terribly uncomfortable. For most of life, we fall into predictable patterns that help us to ensure everything runs more smoothly. Patterns and habits help us make sense of the world. They often save us time. Think about if you had to negotiate with your spouse or with your children every decision that you make every single day. Now, sometimes it may feel like you are actually doing that, especially with your children, but really there are so many assumed patterns of habits guiding our daily lives. For example, just think about the routine that you use to get ready in the morning. I may be the only one, but I get ready the same way every single day. After I shower, I take my vitamins, and then I shave, and then I put on deodorant, and I comb my hair, and then I floss and brush my teeth. A surprise in that routine, i.e. no shaving cream or even a different flavor of toothpaste, it just throws the whole day off. Yes, surprises can disrupt everything, right? Like being out of coffee because you forgot to pick it up at the store or an accident that changes your route to work and makes you late or an unexpected project from your boss that puts you behind on all the projects that were supposed to be finished today or light bulbs that burn out or the internet being down or a doctor rescheduling your appointment. Even for those who love surprises, these kind of things are at least an annoyance. For others, they are catastrophes. Even in our Christian life, I think we tend to have some pretty established patterns and practices for how we expect to find Jesus. Now, there may be a few of you who would love for the order of worship to be a complete surprise every Sunday, for Margaret to play a completely different instrument every week, or maybe for there to be a different preacher every service. But most of us seem to appreciate the patterns and the expectations of worship. Several have even mentioned to me appreciating the note we've added to the bulletin about how we will celebrate communion each time we celebrate. Is it by intention or are we serving in the pews? Where can you find gluten-free bread? And this Sunday, we begin the season of Advent. Each week, we're going to light an additional candle on the Advent wreath. Tomorrow is the Tony Daler Christmas auction. It is always the first Monday in December. Yes, the patterns are familiar. They help us to know what to expect, how to make sense of the world around us. And this year, as we read through this first chapter in the Gospel of Luke, we find this well-ordered account of how to meet Jesus. For readers familiar with the Old Testament, the beginning of this gospel feels like coming home. We meet a couple from the priestly line of Aaron. They are righteous. They live blamelessly before the Lord according to the commandments. The man is a priest. He serves in the temple in Jerusalem, the place where Israelites expect to meet God. In the temple, we find a vision and a heavenly messenger, common ways in which God communicates with God's people. The messenger gives a word of hope about things to come. And the last immediately recognizable feature in Luke's beginning is the promise of a child to a childless old couple. How often have we seen that in Scripture? Sarah and Abraham, Rebecca and Isaac, Rachel and Jacob, Hannah and Elkanah, the first reading we heard today. 
All couples who longed for a child that did not come. So now we meet Zechariah and Elizabeth, holy and blameless before the Lord, but they have no children. Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. Now Luke doesn't tell us, but I imagine that despite their prayers, Zechariah and Elizabeth's dream for a child gradually fades as the years go by. As the patterns for life become fixed, as their expectations of what the future holds change. Yes, they were righteous before the Lord. They lived blamelessly according to all the commandments and the regulations. But the days mounted, the years passed. Their life became filled with other familiar things. But then, surprise! An angel of the Lord appears to Zechariah, and he was terrified. But the angel says, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son. You will name him John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. What? A baby? Zechariah says, how can I know this will happen? For I'm an old man and my wife is getting on in years. And that's the last words that Zechariah is able to speak for nine months. Husbands, if you have an opportunity to choose your words before nine months of silence, I might suggest that you say something a little more flattering about your wife than she's getting on in years. But for Zechariah, this does heighten the surprise, right? All the patterns, all the familiar expectations, all the ways in which life was supposed to go, suddenly thrown out the window. Elizabeth conceives. A baby is coming. Surprise. It may be surprises are not all that bad after all. For his New Testament scholar, Esau McCulley has written, there is a certain comfort in hopelessness. It allows us to guard our hearts, to protect ourselves from being wounded again. But the gospel calls us to the dangerous work of believing that God might indeed be active in our world. That in the midst of so much darkness, there is still space for light. Yes, my friends, if we open our hearts and our lives, we just might see God. We just might be surprised by hope. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. A great and glorious God, surprise us again. We find you in familiar and predictable patterns, and yet you come to us with surprise. Open our hearts, open our lives, that we might expect and meet you once more. For we pray in the name of the child born in Bethlehem, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, in response to hearing scripture read and proclaimed, I do invite you to stand as you are able that we might declare what it is that we believe. Today we use words from the Confession of 1967, printed in your bulletin. Out of Israel, God in due time raised up Jesus. His faith and obedience were the response of the perfect child of God. He was the fulfillment of God's promise to Israel the beginning of the new creation and the pioneer of the new humanity. He gave history its meaning and direction and called the church to be his servant for the reconciliation of the world. You may be seated.
As we respond to God's word, we are reminded by scripture that all things in heaven and on earth belong to God, who is coming in glory to reveal a new creation. Since everything belongs to God and God can do incredible things with ordinary gifts, we are now invited to share what we have, our gifts of time and talent and finances. So whether you give online or by mail or place your offering in the plates as they are passed, let us give joyfully and generously as we continue our worship of God.
Let us pray. Holy God, as we bring to you these gifts, we ask that you might take them and bless them and allow us to hope in all that you might do with them as we prepare the way for Christ this season. Show us all the surprises you have in store for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. My friends, we do come and gather together here around this table, for this is the Lord's table. It's not our table. It's certainly not a Presbyterian table, and all are welcome to come and gather here in this place. We encounter Christ in ordinary things like water from a font, like bread and juice, and yet God continues to meet us and surprise us once more. As we prepare to receive this amazing gift, let us pray. Almighty God, you formed us in your image and set us in this world to serve you. When we were captives in slavery, you delivered us to freedom. When we were stubborn and stiff-necked, you spoke to us through prophets who looked for that day when justice shall triumph and peace shall reign over the earth. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son. You surprised us by coming yourself as Jesus to bring freedom to the captives of sin and to establish justice for the oppressed. He came among us as one of us, taking the lot of the poor, sharing human suffering, dying an unjust death. We rejoice that in his dying and rising again, you set before us the sure promise of new life, the certain hope of a heavenly home where we will sit at table with Christ the host. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Strengthen us, O God, in the power of your spirit to bring good news to the poor and loose the chains that bind, knowing that both now and in the world to come, there is room for our story at your table. Therefore, with the hope and confidence of the children of God, we pray together. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and, and the, the glory, glory forever. forever. Amen. It was on the night that Jesus was arrested that he was gathered in an upper room with his closest friends. And after dinner, he took a loaf of bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, broken for you. Take Eat, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, our Lord also took the cup. Once again, giving thanks to God, he gave it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim our Lord's saving death and his resurrection to new life until he comes. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us celebrate together a joyful feast. In fact, there's elders serving to come forward at this time.
the bread of life. Let us eat together. cup of salvation, all of you, drink from it. Let us pray. Holy God of surprises, we are grateful that you have met us here in these gifts of bread and juice. You have fed us and filled us with your spirit. We ask that these gifts might nourish us long after we have left this table, this day and every day, as we go out with hope into the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
My friends, as we go forth from this place, as our service of worship comes to an end, may our lives of worship and service begin anew. And as we go in the familiar, predictable patterns of our days, may we be surprised, surprised by God, surprised by hope in this season and every season to come. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.